One week before a U.S. nuclear launch, the United States has been closely monitoring Russian movements in Ukraine. Recently, some unsettling images have been brought to light. Satellite imagery reveals nuclear weapons being moved to airfields just across the border in Russia. Mobile launchers also appear to be on the move. The U.S. military intelligence officers scour the data to make sure what they're seeing is accurate. Several MAZ-7917 transporter erector launchers carry RT-2PM Topol ballistic missiles dangerously close to European borders. It looks as if several of the nuclear missiles are positioned to attack the front lines of the Ukrainian conflict. Others have been moved to the far reaches of Russia's eastern territories. This is unsettling for the United States and its NATO allies, as Vladimir Putin is not known for his level-headedness. As his forces suffer defeat after defeat in Ukraine, he might be willing to take drastic measures. The President of the United States is informed of the deployment of nuclear missiles across Russia. He ponders what might be going through Putin's head, but quickly realizes it's a rabbit hole he doesn't wish to go down. Instead, the President of the United States orders several Ohio-class ballistic missile submarines to deploy closer to Russian shores. If a nuclear response by the United States is needed, these submarines will play a vital role in quickly striking key targets before Russia has time to launch a full-scale nuclear attack. The nation's defense network is put on high alert, as intelligence officers try to gather as much intel as possible to provide the president the opportunity to make the most informed decision. B-2A Spirit stealth bombers take off from Whiteman Air Force Base to fly alert patrols near the Russian mainland. They're loaded with GBU-57 AB massive ordnance penetrator bombs in case things go sideways and the U.S. needs to take out Russian high-priority targets hidden deep within protective bunkers. A few B-2s are equipped with B-83 nuclear bombs, however, these aircraft will remain grounded until further notice. These nukes have a maximum yield of 1.2 megatons, making them some of the most powerful nukes in the U.S. arsenal. 24 hours before a U.S. nuclear launch Over the past several days, things have escalated. Ukrainian troops have pushed Russian forces all the way back to Crimea. The Chinese Navy has created a blockade around Taiwan, and Kim Jong-un has been spouting nonsense and threats that if the U.S. tries to interfere with their allies' plans, North Korea is mobilizing forces across the DMZ. In a matter of days, global security has gone from relatively stable, except in Ukraine, to terrifyingly uncertain in multiple parts of the world. The President of the United States doesn't sleep anymore. He keeps a close eye on events unfolding across the Atlantic and in the Pacific. Right now, the best thing that the U.S. and its NATO allies can do is prepare. Everyone was already on high alert, but now the president never lets the nuclear football out of his sight. 47 minutes before a U.S. nuclear launch, a high-ranking general bursts into the Oval Office. The president sits at his desk, staring at the latest images coming in from around the world. Russia, China, and North Korea all seem to be posturing toward taking drastic actions. The president can see by the look on this general's face that this is not going to be good news. Then an emergency alert reaches the president directly from the Pentagon. Russia has launched a nuclear missile. A network of satellites tracks the thermal signature of the Russian nuke. It's heading west toward Europe. The president knows the target is not the United States, as if Russia were to attack the US, their ballistic missiles would fly over the Arctic. However, until more data comes in, the exact location of where the nuke is headed is unknown. The president picks up the red phone on his desk and gets the Secretary of Defense on the other line. It's agreed that everyone should meet in the Situation Room to plan out what the next steps will be. 35 minutes before a U.S. nuclear launch, the Russian missile separates in the atmosphere and now four warheads all fall toward the city of Kiev. Three of the warheads are decoys, but one contains a nuke that could decimate the entire capital of Ukraine. Every NASAMS and anti-air system in Ukraine fires simultaneously. They try desperately to destroy the warheads before the nuke detonates. Most of these systems were designed to take out aircraft, but desperate times call for desperate measures. The world holds its breath, and the seconds tick by. One of the anti-air missiles gets a lucky hit. There's an explosion high up in the atmosphere. It's not clear how many of the warheads were destroyed or if the real nuclear device was the one that was hit. The people of Kyiv take shelter, preparing for the worst. The President of the United States sits in the Situation Room with his generals, praying that this is all just a nightmare he'll wake from. 34 minutes before a U.S. nuclear launch, the Russian nuclear warhead detonates over the city of Kyiv. In an instant, millions of lives are lost. The capital of Ukraine is reduced to a smoldering crater surrounded by irradiated ruins. 33 minutes before a U.S. nuclear launch. Sir, what are your orders? The Secretary of Defense asks the President. His eyes are still fixed on the screen, showing a mushroom cloud rising over what was once Kyiv. Sir, the Secretary of Defense screams. The President closes his eyes and shakes his head. We cannot let him get away with this. 
the president whispers. Get me the leaders of NATO on the phone. We need everyone on the same page before what happens next. 15 minutes before a US nuclear launch, the president of the United States ends the call between the leaders of NATO. He looks around the situation room at his military advisors. The conversation was brief. Everyone agreed that Russia's actions cannot stand without consequences. There needs to be some form of retaliation by NATO. It's clear that Putin has lost his mind. After the nuclear attack, China almost immediately pulled its ships and other forces back to the mainland in an attempt to de-escalate the conflict in East Asia. Even they can't believe that Vladimir Putin would fire a nuclear missile at Ukraine. China has a strict policy of only using nuclear weapons to defend its own territory. They condemn Russia for escalating the war in Ukraine into a much more dangerous global conflict. The Situation Room is silent. The European countries and NATO have already begun mobilizing their forces. The plan is to hit Putin hard and fast. But the problem is, the mad Russian dictator still has more nuclear weapons, many more. The President of the US has declared that Vladimir Putin must be immediately punished and that NATO needs to send a clear message. The US has taken it upon itself to launch a retaliatory nuclear strike against several key military installations across Russia. These nukes will not target major cities or population areas, but they will cripple Russia's nuclear stores and military infrastructure. I've made my decision, the President says. Bring me the codes. 13 minutes before a US nuclear launch. Everyone turns to look at the man holding the black briefcase in the corner of the Situation Room. For a moment, he doesn't move. He knows the ramifications of delivering the briefcase to the President now that he's made up his mind. But it is his sworn duty. The man takes a step forward and carries the nuclear football to the table. He places it in front of the President of the United States and returns to his post. The President unlatches the clasps of the briefcase. They swing open with a satisfying click. The President then opens the case and pulls out the contents, laying them out on the table in front of him. First, the President opens the Black Book, which contains the retaliatory options available to him. There are all types of scenarios. The President runs his index finger over the table of contents until he lands on the one he's looking for. He flips through the pages and finds the correct one. The room is as quiet as a graveyard. It's as if the air has been sucked out of the chamber. No one moves. The President reads what's written on the page to himself and nods his head. He closes the black book and opens another booklet that contains a list of classified sites and their locations around the globe. It's here that he finds the targets that will be hit when he gives the final order to launch nukes at Russia. The President closes the book and opens a manila folder that contains several pages of authentication codes. He picks up the phone and calls the National Military Command Center at the Pentagon. They've been expecting his call. The voice on the other line speaks an authentication code into the receiver to verify that the person on the other line is, in fact, the President of the United States. The President pauses for a moment as he reads the words on the laminated card known as the Biscuit. These words are known only to the President and confirm his identity. The member of the National Military Command Center listens to the response. It is correct. Next, the President relays the specific code that signifies which type of strike he wants. Now that the President has chosen to launch, there's nothing anyone can do to stop the process. The President of the United States is the only one who can authorize a nuclear launch and is the only one who can cancel it once the process has begun. This makes many people in the Situation Room and around the country nervous, especially if they don't agree with his decision. But there's nothing anyone can do about it now. Five minutes before a US nuclear launch. The codes have been authenticated. The identity of the President has been confirmed. The encrypted instructions on what missiles should be prepared for launch and their targets are sent out to all parties involved. These sealed authentication system codes are received by military personnel around the world. When they come in, safes are opened at each site to retrieve the verification codes to ensure the SAS codes are real. Underground launch control centers that control the Minuteman missile silos in the heart of the country prepare for launch. Air Force generals order B-2 pilots to report to their planes. Deep under the waters of the Pacific Ocean, encrypted communications are sent to the Ohio-class submarines who ready their nuclear missiles for launch. In each instance, the NMCC orders are authenticated one more time by those who receive them to ensure that the most serious decision that's ever been made is real. The NMCC sends out actual missile launch codes. There is one more failsafe to ensure that every possible opportunity to abort the firing sequence has been given. One minute before a US nuclear launch. The crews at the underground missile silos open a box containing two keys. The commander at the facility holds onto one and gives the other to his second in command. Submarine captains hand off a key to their first mate, who walks over to one of the terminals aboard the submarine and prepares for what comes next. The captain pulls his own key out from the chain around his neck. The B-2s that are en route to their targets have been given the authorization to go weapons free. The two pilots in each cockpit are tasked with ensuring their payload hits the correct target. 10 seconds before a US nuclear launch. 
There's collective anticipation across every branch of the military at this point. All high-ranking officers know what's about to happen. The US is going to war and it's launching nukes to kick off what will likely be a catastrophic series of events. There's still hope that by destroying most of Russia's nuclear capabilities, an all-out nuclear exchange can be avoided, but this can't be confirmed with 100% accuracy. The seconds tick down. 5 seconds before a US nuclear launch. Each launch requires that both keys are turned within milliseconds of each other. This ensures that no single person is responsible for launching the nukes and adds another layer of protection against unintentionally starting a nuclear war. One second before a US nuclear launch. The keys turn in their slots. The launch of the United States' nuclear arsenal is initiated. The nuclear triad is the backbone of America's national security. The triad consists of land, air, and sea nuclear launch capabilities, and the President's decision requires that all three branches fire their missiles at Russia. One second after US nuclear missiles are launched. The engines on 100 Minuteman III missiles roar to life in their underground silos. These ballistic missiles are located in Colorado, Montana, Nebraska, North Dakota, and Wyoming. The ground shakes as the silo doors open, and the Minuteman missiles roar into the sky. These ICBMs will fly over the Arctic to hit their targets on the other side of the world. The soldiers working in the underground launch control centers ask for forgiveness as they listen to the nukes take flight. The commanders at each facility are still on the phone with the President of the United States and the National Military Command Center. They update them on the progress as the missiles rise higher and higher into the atmosphere. Airborne missile combat crews monitor the ICBMs once they enter the upper atmosphere to ensure they're still on target. The Minuteman III rockets have a range of over 6,000 miles. They accelerate toward their top speed of 15,000 miles per hour, which is around Mach 23. Each missile weighs just under 80,000 pounds, which is a lot of weight to launch 700 miles above the Earth's surface. The rockets use three solid propellant motors to get the job done. Seven Ohio-class ballistic missile submarines rise close to the surface just off the Kamchatka Peninsula. This is only half of the Ohio-class subs that the US has at its disposal, but for the current mission, it's all that's needed. The way the submarines were designed makes them almost impossible for the enemy to locate until they surface, and at that point it's too late. Each submarine can carry 20 ballistic missiles with independently targeted warheads. This means that each one of the warheads can be assigned a different target. This will make it incredibly hard for Russia to intercept them all or launch effective countermeasures. It's almost inevitable that at least some of the missiles will hit their targets. The Trident II D-5 missiles erupt out of their submarine silos and accelerate into the air. As soon as the missiles have been launched, the silo doors are closed, and the submarine descends back into the depths of the ocean where it'll hide from any enemy ships trying to locate it. The submarines stealthily make their way back to their respective naval bases to be resupplied for their next mission. There's no rush at this point, as the Ohio-class subs typically spend 77 days at sea before returning for routine maintenance. However, if they needed to, the subs could stay underwater for much longer, as they're nuclear-powered and don't need to surface to replenish air. Instead, they use electrolysis to break apart H2O molecules and generate oxygen for the crew. The B-2 bombers are still traveling toward their objectives. Their timing has been precisely planned out, so they drop their bombs as soon as the first nuclear missiles hit their targets. The key to the President's plan is that the nukes strike Russia almost simultaneously, five minutes after US nuclear missiles are launched. NATO forces have launched a series of aerial and ground attacks into Russian territory. Their main objective is to serve as a decoy for what's to come. Bombers and fighter jets hit key Russian radar stations that survey the northern edges of Russian territory and the skies over the Arctic. This is done to prevent early detection of the incoming ballistic missiles arcing over the North Pole of the planet. Ground forces speed toward Moscow in an attempt to force Putin's attention on the invasion instead of the strategic nuclear strikes that the US just launched. It's a race against time for NATO forces. They need to cause as much damage and mayhem as possible to distract the mad dictator of Russia from launching his own nukes. Long-range missiles target key communication hubs between Moscow and the rest of the country. The more disruptive NATO forces can be, the better the chances the US nukes have at hitting their targets without being intercepted. 15 minutes after US nuclear missiles are launched, the Trident II D-5 missiles descend toward their targets. Simultaneously, the B-2s drop their nuclear bombs. These stealth aircraft are supplemented by a handful of B-21 Raiders with upgraded tech and longer ranges. The Russians have no idea that these aircraft have entered their airspace. They claimed that their newest forms of radar could detect even stealth bombers, but this, like so much of Russia's military posturing, is just a fabrication. The pilots sight their targets using a combination of infrared sensors, satellite telemetry, and high-tech radar. 
They've already been given the all clear to drop their nukes since they must maintain radio silence while in Russian airspace to keep from being detected. Each B-2 drops 16 2,400-pound B-83 nuclear bombs. They use sophisticated guidance systems to ensure that the nukes hit their targets. In an instant, dozens of nuclear missiles and bombs detonate above key Russian military installations. The distraction by NATO forces seems to have worked. The already weakened Russian military is so understaffed due to the war in Ukraine that they just didn't have the personnel to effectively monitor the NATO attacks and the incoming US nuclear warheads. However, it's now clear what the strategy is. Putin screams at his generals to launch any Russian nukes that remain. At that very moment, a B-61 thermonuclear gravity bomb penetrates the ground near where Vladimir Putin is hunkered down in a bunker. The nuke detonates and instantly wipes out the Russian president and his closest generals. This will cause a breakdown in the chain of command and should deter Russia from launching its own nukes. Luckily, the classified information the President of the United States had included detailed instructions on where the first nuclear warheads needed to strike to deactivate the Russian dead hand contingency. The automated system is supposed to kick in if the Russian leadership is ever killed in a nuclear attack. Dead Hand uses information and sensors to determine if an all-out retaliatory strike should be launched if Russian leadership has been compromised. However, the system was from the Soviet era, and like many of the military systems that carried over from the time period, it was not properly maintained. A few well-placed nuclear strikes have completely disabled the Dead Hand system and have kept Russian protocols from instantly launching every remaining nuke they had at US and NATO targets. 30 minutes after US nuclear missiles are launched, the Minuteman 3 ICBMs are about to strike their targets. The warheads are descending toward the Earth at top speed. The remaining leaders of the Russian military use the A-135 system, which once consisted of 68 nuclear-armed interceptors and phased-array radar stations to track and destroy incoming missiles. But the first strike by the US has already decimated countless bases and assets, rendering their defensive network almost completely inoperable. The Russian Unified Air Defense System is still relaying information. The problem is, the military personnel required to effectively launch nuclear countermeasures have been decimated by the initial attack and by the war in Ukraine. However, two of the six Voronezh early warning radar installations still remain and are connected to the S-400 and S-500 anti-missile systems. The S-400 is designed to intercept aircraft and ballistic missiles with a range of up to 250 miles. The upgraded version of these missiles has an active radar to help them track incoming targets. The Russian military launches several S-400 at the incoming Minuteman 3s. Several hit their targets and detonate. Russia also has next-generation S-500s, but with a shortage of semiconductors and materials due to sanctions from the war in Ukraine, the upgrading of their missile defense systems has yet to be completed. The Minuteman 3 nukes hit their marks. Almost all of the major Russian targets that the President of the US ordered to be destroyed are now either vaporized or consumed by fire. The Russian landscape is covered in radiation. Its military is decimated. Key Russian government and military leaders are no more. The mission was a success, but at what cost? A US nuclear launch is something that the world hopes will never happen again. Now watch What If North Korea Launched a Nuclear Bomb Minute by Minute, or check out This Is How You Actually Survive a Nuclear Attack.